Hello everyone, and welcome to my no-nonsense video on how to start up the FA-18C Hornet in DCS World. Full disclosure here, this is not going to be the proper way you start the Hornet as per the manual. However, if you're like me, and you have limited time to play, and you'd rather just get up and fly, this is for you. Now you can easily just use the Windows and E keys for an auto start, but I don't know about you, I still want to feel like a badass starting this multi-million dollar fighter. In this video, we will be using some of the hotkeys that we went over in my key bindings tutorial. I will link the video in the description below. Enough of that. Let's get started. Okay, so first thing we want to do here is we want to arm the ejection seat with this lever here. We're going to left click on it to bring it to the armed position. Just to our right is the battery switch. We're going to right click on it to bring it on. My personal preference is to have this stick not shown. So at the base of the stick, I can left click on it to hide it from view. We could turn our auxiliary power unit on by right clicking this switch. We're going to turn our onboard oxygen on with this switch, right click to the on position. We're going to turn our formation and position lights on with these knobs. We're going to left click and move the mouse up, put it to the brightest position. We're going to turn our dispenser switch on with right click. Our ECM knob we're going to set to receive with right click. Our ALR67 radar warning receiver, we're going to turn the power button on here with left click. We're going to come down to our radar knob, and I'm going to move it to the operational position. INS, we're going to move it to CV for carrier. If we were at an airbase or just a regular airport, we would use the ground mode. Now we want to prep our screens. We're going to move these knobs to day. If we were doing a night mission, we would set it to night. This screen's a little different. It's got a brightness knob. So we're going to left click on it and move the mouse up to turn it to the brightest setting. Same with the HUD and the black level. Now the black level, not sure if that's actually needed, but that's what I've been doing. Now we're going to uncage our AVI here by scrolling the mouse wheel down on this knob. We'll remove that red flag off of the window. Now since our APU is green lit, we can now start cranking the engine over. So we're gonna first start with the right motor. So we're gonna right click on the switch to put it to the right position. When we get to 25%, we're gonna use the hotkey right shift home and it'll bring our right throttle from off to idle so you can see the temperature increase and the rpm increase and you can also see that the right side of the throttle has moved from off to idle now since our motors are starting our motor is going to start sending power to our systems so our screens are now going to turn on. We're going to wait until this bottom screen turns on and we're going to hit the stored heading button. So this is going to help speed up the align time so we can get our GPS uh, navigation quicker. It's going to take the, take the info from the carrier system and input them here. Now we're going to start our left motor, so come to the engine crank switch, left click, wait for the left side to get to 25, 
and we're going to use right alt home to move that up to the idle position. Now we can come and close our canopy with this lever here. We're going to left click and hold and we're going to make sure that it's closed and locked because if it's open it's probably going to blow off once we get into the air. Now we're going to set our bingo fuel. Now this is really going to be mission dependent but I found that about 3500 pounds is a good average to start with. Now we're going to turn on our IFF system, so the identify friend or foe. So on our UFC, we got this IFF button. We're going to hit it once. Then we're going to come over to the on button. We're going to click and hold for one second. We're going to see XP here, so it's now on. We're also going to do the same with our downlink, which is the DL button here. I'm going to left click it, come back to the on. Left click and hold for one second and you're going to see on here. Now you see a bunch of bit failures all blinking here. So we're going to hit stop. Now there's two modes that we're going to go through. So we're going to go through the flight control system, which is the FCS here. And we're also going to do displays for the uh, helmet site. So first we're going to use the FCS test. So we're going to go into the FCS test page. We're going to hold Y on the keyboard and we're going to hit FCS here and you're going to see in test. So it's going to run through some tests. Now you can see on the left here we have an FCS warning. So to remove that on the left side here you see this big reset button. We're going to click and hold that down until we see RSET, so reset on our screen and that'll go away in like four or five seconds. Once that reset's gone away we can set our takeoff trim which is this button here. We're going to left click it once. So now we're going to see if our um, INS is aligned, so we're going to go to one of our screens, we're going to hit menu, menu again to go to the support page, HSI, and we're going to look for the OK. If we have the OK, we can now move our INS knob here to the IFA position, which is right here. So we're going to right click this knob three times. So now we have GPS guidance. Now we're going to align our HMD helmet. So first thing we need to do is we need to turn it on. So we got an HMD knob here. I'm going to turn it to the brightest setting with left click and moving the mouse up. Now you can see it's on. We're going to need to go to the built-in test page on one of our screens. So we're going to go to menu. Menu again to support. Bit at the top. And displays. We're going to hit HMD. Now it's going to go through a few different test patterns. And once they repeat themselves about maybe three, four times, we can hit the stop button. All right, so that's enough. So we'll hit stop. Now we got to do the helmet alignment. So now we're going to go down to menu. We're going to hit menu again to support page. We got a new function that opened up called HMD. We'll go into that and in the bottom left you'll see align. We're going to hit that button and now we have two crosses. So we got to align the cross with our helmet sight with the cr big cross on the HUD as best we can. Now we're going to hold down the uncage cage button until we see align OK and we let go. Now we're going to have two crosses we need to move. 
So we're going to use the TDC slew button, or TDC slew horizontal and vertical. We're going to move it so the top little cross is in the center of the big cross. And then we'll hit the on cage cage button. Now we're going to do the roll. So you can see the bottom one is now moving left to the right. We'll use our TDC slew again to line it up with the long stem on the bottom of the cross. And then we'll come down to our DDI here and we'll uncheck the align. And now it's saved. So now our helmet mounted sight is now aligned and ready to go. Now we can clear out our cautions. So we're going to left click our master caution switch. And we're going to left click and hold again to reset everything. Or clear the memory, I should say. So we're going to need to unfold our wings as we're on a carrier. So the lever to do that is here. We're going to right click on it twice and scroll the mouse wheel up, push it in. And now you can see the wings are now unfolding and will lock into place. So now we can remove the parking brake. So only touch the parking brake when the INS is finished aligning. If you hit the parking brake as it's still doing its alignment, it's going to stop the alignment process and you'll have to redo it. Now you might be thinking, we're good to go, but we're not. On a carrier, we have wheel chocks. So when I was first learning, I would put the thrust up to maximum and I would still be sitting in the same spot. So you can see we have wheel chocks on our front and the rear tires. So to remove them, we're going to have to call onto the ground crew. So using the forward slash or backslash key, it's the one that's above the enter on the keyboard. We're going to push that and then we're going to go to ground crew wheel chocks, remove. Now you can set up your DDIs to how you want them to look. So one other important thing, since we have the takeoff trim set, once you take off, you got your landing gear up and you got your flaps up, you're going to want to reset the FCS. So you're going to click this button and hold down till you see the reset button. So it's going to reset your trim. So with the takeoff trim on, you're always going to be pitched up a bit. So it's, it's going to be hard to keep a level flight. So other than that, we're good to go. Thank you for watching. Give me a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments your thoughts and if you have any requests for any future videos. This is Apti86 signing off. Good hunting.